Hey everybody, in this video, I have the pleasure of being with three different Rockstar VIP members in this video. We're in Waterloo and we're checking out Gordon and Grane Aiken's amazing basement apartment. It's a three bedroom, two bathroom basement, the nicest basement apartment I've ever seen. I really mean that. And uh, Andy Tran, who's also a Rockstar VIP member from Sweet Editions, helped with the design and construction of this project. In this video, we're gonna check it out, do a full tour, share the numbers at the end of the video. All right, let's do this. Let's go. Right, cool. So before we get into the kind of the nuts and bolts of what you did, why don't you just show us the space, uh, you know, how everything is laid out. Tell sure. us, you know, is it is it two bedroom, three bedroom? What's the kind of overall layout here? Yeah, absolutely. So it, we decided to do this as a three bedroom unit. Most basements are two, but we wanted to give it a little more perceived value to add a third bedroom. So what we did is we configured an open living kitchen space here and we had three, be three bedrooms then off around the edge. So with existing windows, so all the bedrooms already had windows in them and um, you know, it worked very well. So we had this wall here already existing right through the, uh, right through the unit. So we had to work with that. So we decided to make this into the kitchen space and we had to do a little bit of reconfiguring. And the big part of this was the window. So this was a tiny window. It was maybe like two feet wide or exactly, something, yeah. really tiny basement window. It's now seven feet. So we have made it as large as we can. Um, really nice span and the, the way the, the sun comes in, this comes in throughout the day, which, which really makes this feel less like a basement unit. Um, we've also um, configured it so that it didn't need a window well, so it doesn't impinge on the, the driveway space. So we managed to you know, get the space so that it was just above grade. And the, the lighting here provides all the lighting then for the kitchen and for the living space. So the, the lighting requirements for the living space, we were able to use this to do so. So that was a big consideration. Yeah, us. so when we were designing, we were trying to figure the space out and it made sense that the right side here, as soon as we come down, this is the living room. That's right. And then this is the kitchen, obviously, with the plumbing and everything, but we had challenges with the uh, with the lighting, right? And the way we've done it here is that we've essentially borrowed the natural lighting from the kitchen for the living space, yes. but then the kitchen, of course, is going to benefit as well, right? Because most people are going to be spending their time here. It's all open concept. There's no wall separating the living room and the kitchen. Everyone is kind of in one space. And it makes sense these days. Like, people like to entertain yes. kind of like in the one space, that's right? That's right, that's right. We also had split the hydro. So we moved one panel into the main unit and then the second panel we've put on the, the wall on the opposite side. You might have seen that when we came in down the stairs. Also in the kitchen here, we have provided our tenants with um, a couple of things to save the countertops. And um, I should mention, this is actually our second duplex project. And in the first one, we, we did a lot of learning and a lot of sourcing. So the second time round, we were a little, um, you know, we we're thinking a little bit differently. So rather than splash out on the high end quartz countertops, we did go with laminate and um, we're very, very happy with it. Um, but obviously with the associate, we don't want people putting hot pots down and things like that. So we have provided trivets and cutting boards for our tenants and um, just a little, just an extra housewarming gift, I suppose. I didn't know what trivets were, but there you, you know, go. I learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's have a look at the rest of the place. So this here obviously is your living space and it works very well because it's at the center of everything, True. right? You have your uh, bedrooms on the corners. Uh, you have a very nice uh, bathroom uh, that's available for everyone to use. But before we jump in there, I want to talk about this. Where Gordon is standing is that this used to be a cold cellar, yeah. right? A cold room. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's have a look at it right now. Like it's, Excellent. yeah, tell, tell me what you well, did here. Well, the cold room itself, um, one of the things that we had, one of the problems we had was there was a lot of mechanicals. This is a soft, uh, sorry, a hard water area. So we had to put water softeners into um, the unit, but we had to have two because we were splitting the water and uh, we're also splitting the hydro. We had to put extra, extra uh, hydro panels in there. Um, but this area here, because we had lots and lots of mechanicals, we needed to split them somehow. So one thing we did was we framed the, the cold room and we put in the washing machines here. And because there was extra space and it was actually plumbed in um, or roughed in, we put in an extra toilet and an extra uh, basin, which was was amazing. So that added to the value of the apartment as well. So um, also the water was here initially. And because we had to split the water, we didn't want to have all the split water here. So what we did is we, we have the shut off here and then we took all the water over into the mechanical room. And from there we split it. We did the sprinklers, 
the, um, as far as separation, we did the uh, two meters because we split the water, as I said, and uh, we had the water softeners over there and the two water heaters, one for upstairs and one downstairs. So that meant that we didn't have to crush everything in here where the water supply came into the building. So, uh, and it's just nice, it's, it's nicely finished, that kind of light, airy look to the whole thing. A little bit lower ceilings, but uh, just got a bright, spacious look about the whole place. Yeah, I like that the laundry is here yeah, and not yeah. in the main bath, so yes. that, you know, someone's like showering, you know, somebody else can be doing laundry here. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And this is, um, there's all concrete walls in here because it was a cold room, so that had some of its own challenges. And obviously with this very narrow doorway, so for that reason we did a, a barn door and it also adds to the aesthetics I think it looks good yeah yep. and obviously being a uh, being a basement apartment we needed a, an egress window the egress window was in here before although the shape was cut out fine into the uh, foundation the window itself didn't have the spe specified glass area so we had to change that window out but it's a nice um, area look to the whole thing you know we really when we were doing this project we were trying to um, you know, not reinvent the wheel, to reuse as much as was there as possible. I think with the, you know, having it being a basement and, you know, yeah. having that fear of being, being dark, we did go with the lighter floors yeah. and with the lighter with walls. With the walls, yeah, that was a tier point. Oh, you, you guys did a good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. I like that it's not millennial grey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're done with grey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. The floor itself um, is, is actually loose lay floor right. and uh, Obviously, we have, um, you know, you put down a, a classic laminate or whatever down here, or if you put down vinyl flooring, if there's any damage in the middle, then you've got to change it. So it can be replaced. So if you get a high wear area or something that's spilled or damaged or, or burned or whatever, you basically just lift the floor up and you can just, you just put down another piece of flooring. So the mechanical room, um, we have one furnace to cover the heating for top and bottom. The thermostat is upstairs. Um, and it's run by gas. So the gas bill is going to be split between the two units. Um, because it's a, a duplex, we did have to do some extra consideration for uh, fire separation. And one of them is on the furnace here, there is um, a smoke duct detector that will induct smoke duct detector. So this will knock off the fan should there be a fire at any time. So it won't um, send the fire right through the whole house. So if it detects any smoke whatsoever, it will just shut off the furnace. So that that was part of the permit that we had to do that. Yeah. So we've done that. And this was all existing. You know, we did look at designs where we were going to move the furnace room to create more space. But in the end, we decided not to do that. The ductwork was already in place, so we were able to keep all of that. And we didn't actually have to create fire separation because normally what you have, because it's a furnace room, normally what you would have is you'd have to insulate this from fire and make it actually part of the fire compartment or upstairs or downstairs, but it's hard to cut around all that stuff. So one of the alternatives that are offered is you can put a sprinkler system in, and that was very, very simple. So you can see yeah, we've got a around sprinkler there, system the sprinkler there in case there's any problems with fire. So originally there was a gas water heater here, which was rented. We decided to purchase um, water heaters and softeners and also to move over to electric and that way upstairs pays for their own hydro, so their own water heater. The only thing that shares, as I mentioned, is, is the gas for the furnace. So we have one water heater here and then around the corner we have a second water heater and then uh, tucked in here we've got two water softeners because we're in a hard water area. And uh, this is where all the magic happens for, for the water system. Um, from the powder room the main water line comes here then it gets split so it gets well actually the first thing it does is it, it is for the uh, it sprinkler. goes to the sprinkler mm -hmm. system and then after that it gets split and we have top and bottom so we've installed private water meters here so this way we can um, measure how much water each unit is using and then the city will bill us for the total usage and we will um, charge back to the tenants you know, what their usage was. So initially we weren't really sure of our final tenant. We weren't sure we we're gonna have a single family home with maybe two or three kids in it. We weren't sure we we're gonna have Airbnb. Eventually we plummeted for the third option and it was mostly because we got a lot of students applying for this particular property. So we decided eventually that it was better to do this as a student rental. So that meant that we're partially having to uh, furnish the area. We decided to furnish this main common room, which is just basically sofa, couple of tables. We put in some chairs there as well. 
and we managed to source all this stuff pretty um, pretty simply. The, um, the actual sofas were love seats from the uh, Toronto Board of Education at 200 bucks each. It wasn't, it was a no brainer and it looks just amazing. And uh, with the students we've got in here are from a particular faculty. And so we're gonna put some artwork on and just make it seem more at home for them, you know? So yeah, th so that was, we're getting quite excited. And that's something we pushed away from initially was the was the student rental because of the, we hadn't done it before. And there was a slight fear of how it was gonna be treated. Now we're very, very comfortable and excited about the new, new tenants that are gonna be moving in. Yeah. That's right. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Um... Yeah, so off the common room here, we've got um, the main bathroom and uh, the second bedroom. The bedrooms are all kind of Relatively, similar in yeah, size. In size there isn't they are, yeah, like yeah. Overwhelming, and they all have different aspects. They're all facing different directions. And two of the bedrooms have huge closets. You know, seven feet. They're seven feet on the inside, and you know we've installed some really heavy duty um, shelving there. So um, you know that's that's a plus. Um, we've got. Um, Smoke detectors. That was an in interesting thing, room. yeah. So there was a lot of code re regarding fire, and one of the new, some of the new code that everyone will probably know is that we got to have these special, uh, you know, fire. The disco lights. The disco lights, right? The the the, the uh, uh, strobes on the um, fire fire and smoke detector. Um, and then these are interconnected with yeah. um, upstairs as well. So all of the common areas plus the bedrooms have yeah. that. Yeah, and I, I noticed that uh, you pretty much went all out with this with this bathroom here. You, you like know, it? Just, yeah, very much. Yeah. This is, so this is a very high end. I like the color. I like the top here. Mm -hmm. Toilet, obviously, is, is a higher end toilet. You know, and it is, and it all looks higher end, but because we spent a lot of time with the sourcing, we actually managed to source all of these for very good price. You know, I mean, this, you know, I can mention some prices here. I mean, this was $150 on special. This actually came from an auction. It's brand new in a box. One of the things um, we have advantage here is the high ceiling. So, oh, absolutely. You yeah. know, that made a huge difference. We have this one area here with the ductwork, but I actually think even it the makes ductwork, a feature. Even the ductwork, this is like the actual ceiling for a lot of basements, right? That's, yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. So, so, you know, when, you know, when we were looking for a property, that was one of our requirements to find something that we could convert. So having that high ceiling. For fire separation, we had to put in 5 eighths drywall, resilient channels, safe and sound insulation. Um, but we went above and beyond and we actually put a layer of Sonopan on, across the entire ceiling and all around the ductwork because, you know, our goal is to have happy tenants. So we want to make sure that there is as little sound traveling between the two units as possible. So anything we could do that way and having that ceiling height was- It made a huge advantage. difference, didn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You can hardly hear the tenant upstairs, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, and during the, you know, when we were on site, the design itself, this closet wasn't part of the original design. But once we saw the space physically, we were able to walk around it. We realized we had this extra space and we could add in an extra closet. So that was the nice thing about being able to, you know, to be so involved in the project. We'll maybe touch on this later on, but the demand for this property was huge. And one of the big reasons I think we had demand is because we use digital staging. I mean, the unit itself is amazing, but at the end of the day, by being able to stage this digitally, it attracted so many people. I know. We were getting people, like... Yeah, some people even said, does it come with the furniture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, real. and, and yeah. we were getting phone calls from um, people in other countries. Can your children, That's can, right. can our children get this up? Like they're coming and then that you want yes. to have a secure place yeah. for them, right? For them to come, yeah. you know, and it was really amazing. But the demand we were getting, what, 300 uh, applications a week, something oh, in region, huge. it was huge. huge. Wow. Yeah, it, it was massive. Yeah. And it was even going through, it was very time consuming, just sorting it all out. Anyway, we think we've got the right yeah. tenants at the end of the day. We always feel that, you know, we take the time beforehand to choose tenants that suit um, suit the property and suit us and our goals. And we like to have a good working relationship with our tenants. We, mm -hmm. know, we, we manage the properties ourselves. So, yeah. you know, we, you know, we live within 15, 20 minutes of all our properties, so we can be there if we need to. Um, and then we also have like a WhatsApp group that we set up with our tenants so that if there's any issues, they can just 
know, pop a question in there. It also means for multiple tenants and for Gordon and I, we're all kept in the loop. So there's yeah. none of this like, oh, I, I said it to him, but did you not hear and that type of thing. So, exactly. So and we, we, we travel that. a lot as well. So it was going to give us the ability to keep an eye on what was happening back home by using a WhatsApp group That's right. um, just to share things. And so we've obviously got contractors and things that can sort problems out in a hurry and being able to do that on a, on a group is amazing. Yeah, but you want to know about the issues, right? You yeah, don't want to have to find out about them like 12 hours later, but then you know about it and then you can relay that over yeah. to the contractor right away. Yeah, that's what we always say to our tenants, you know, anything at all, just, you know, if it's something that's not like, if there isn't like a flood happening, put it in the WhatsApp and we will deal with it. If it's an absolute emergency, pick up the phone and call mm -hmm. us. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks so much for the tour, guys. This is awesome. Um, now, I think you know people want to know some of the nitty-gritty details, some of the numbers. Uh, we have Anthony here joining us from Rockstar, so uh, I think you have a bunch of questions, so why don't we jump into it? Well, so what motivated you guys to take on this awesome project? Good question, yeah. So um, back in early 2022, we had it decided to just reevaluate all our real you know, estate, our real estate yeah. and you know where our life was going you know we were looking to the future wanting to travel more and um you know we had you know a number of single family homes which were all you know look work, working nicely they were for our pension and then we just decided well look you know when when is the future well let's start planning it sooner rather than later so, so some of our projects actually some of our earlier portfolio um had been, it was looking a bit tired, it needed refresh, needed revamped, but the rents were, because it was 10 years old, wasn't really keeping up with the uh, market rent. And so we um, had three particular projects in mind, which we, we worked with to try and um, renovate these projects, to make them into duplexes, to make them cash flow at the end of the day. And so that was what we were trying to do in order to create some form of passive income for allow us to be able to travel as well. So that was our, our one of our main motivations. Is there anything else that you... Yeah, yeah. I guess um, we were lucky enough to be able to sell one of our properties at that time in early 2022, which... Right at the height then, of the market, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that gave us then some equity and some capital to reinvest into the rest of our properties. This one we actually purchased in November 2022, um, and we were able to then, um, you know, include it as one of our projects. Yeah, yeah travel is a great motivator. It is, yeah, <laughs> yeah free time. Yeah. yeah. And the initial, initially, we bought this was a 727, the, the, the purchase price of this property. We actually had to go above and beyond. It went into multiple offers at, at, at that particular time, but we purchased the property for 727,000, and uh, since then we have put in. What was the cost of the project? 120. 120,000 120, just for the, the basement. And you didn't have to do much upstairs. It was pretty much moving yeah. ready upstairs, right? There's a couple of things. The um, you know, some of the plumbing wasn't a code, so we did that as as part of it. That was really the main the main idea. And obviously we moved the, the panel when we split the, the mm -hmm. hydro. So But having somebody upstairs right away from was day good. one from day one really was great because they carried the mortgage for the time of the project so we had somebody in that was actually having their own house renovated and uh, they um stayed for was it several months and mm -hmm. uh, while we did went through the planning stage while we went through the uh, design stage and so when they moved out to move into the new property it was great it worked out really fine because that was the time when we did a lot of the heavy lifting within the project the, the, the jack hammer, jackhammering of the floors and all the rest of it so we had about three months in the summer where we could do all that and then as soon as the summer was finished we then had a tenant upstairs so that carried a whole lot of the project and allowed us to to work downstairs while still kind of keeping our head above water yep. as far as the project was concerned you know so, so the uh, you brought up the numbers uh so you you told us what the purchase price was and you told us what the renovation was so uh would you mind sharing um the uh, the rental income sure. that you're receiving uh, right. for the the students that are here well upstairs um we have a young professional couple and it's a three bedroom one bathroom and the rent there is 2850 plus utilities mm -hmm. down here with our student group um we are doing each room for 1100 dollars, so that's 3300 and we are covering the utilities for that so that's including utilities right the key thing though is it's single lease so you're basically getting everything from one party and you're exactly. not collecting individually the they're all one group and, and you're doing one lease and it's just going to make things easier for you, right? That's right. Right. Yeah. And okay. You know, it being a student group, we also have um, parental guarantees as part of that. And uh, we actually will get to meet the parents when they move in. So. It actually, it was the parents that saw this apartment and initiated the whole thing, which was yeah. fantastic. So usually the case. Yeah. 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 And, and that's a good sign. They're, they're good. They're good people as well, right? Yeah. Good students. Yeah. 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 
Anthony, yeah. you had other questions. Yeah, what was the inspection process like on this property? So with the uh, permit and inspection, we went back and forth a couple of times with the design. Um, in particular here, we had to, you know, the parking and the access, you know, we had to go back and forth with some of that. And um, with the actual, you know, once we got the permit approved, the first thing we did was actually do a meet and greet. So um, we had the inspector come on site. We had the plumber, the electrician. We had uh, Rob from Sweet Additions come with us. And, you know, just we're all on the same page. You know, we had done a previous project, so it wasn't our first rodeo. Um, you know, and, the, you know, some questions that we had, you know, how is it interpreted here? You know, there are building, there is building code, which which is fixed, but, you know, there are certain things that different municipalities mm. will. They, they would let some things slide, while other things they would say, no, you need to do this. So some of it was original and they lived with that, and some of it they asked us to change. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, because it was a new apartment, we had things like, we had to put in a... Um, the strengthening for the bars and the and the washrooms, which we wouldn't have to do in other apartments. Great, yeah. I mean, definitely, there's always differences between municipalities, and even when within municipalities, there's different interpretations from the plans examiners and the inspectors. So it's good, you know, once you know the market, you kind of know what they're looking for, and you kind of work yeah. towards, you know, what they're mm -hmm. what yeah. they're trying to achieve. Yeah, and then the other thing I think was as well developing that working relationship with the inspector, so that. You know, we, we had done it before and, you know, when we went through at the beginning, he knew we were serious and we weren't fly-by-night people trying to get away with everything. We were going to take this seriously. We were going above and beyond with certain aspects as well. So I think that, you know, he did appreciate that and was able to guide us through the project. And we'd also gotten over that in our first project. Oh my God, scary, scary inspectors coming. It's not like that. I mean, everybody's goal is to, to have, um, you know, more rental units, you know, available and that are safe and comfortable for tenants. And, you know, so we're all working towards the same goal. And this area is actually permitted as well. So we actually have to, apart from the actual planning and the, and, and the uh, permit for, for the actual building, we also have to get the rental actually permitted as well. The so license. Yeah, the yeah. license, yeah, the yeah. license for the, um, for the city sort of thing, which yeah. is very unusual for this area. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe just to wrap here, like what were some of the key lessons that you had throughout this whole project and things you took away from it? Yeah, one of the things was we, we, we took an awful lot of things as red. So if the, if the inspector said, okay, it's okay for this. One thing we didn't ask about was we noticed that perhaps when we came down the stairs, the, um, the ceiling was a bit low when we came down the stairs. And we actually thought, we didn't discuss this with the, um, with the inspector. So when it came round and he came for the final inspections, he went, oh, this is a bit on the low side. So um, we had it measured up and he said, no, you're gonna have to actually raise the ceiling height. And that was a challenge for us because everything was in place. If we had approached this when it was still an empty shell, it would have been a no brainer, it'd be no problem at all. But because we had to do it afterwards, we had to take down part of the ceiling and things. So that was a learning curve for us. We wanted to, we should really chat in, in great detail with exactly what yes. we think. Yeah, and that was the... That was a good takeaway for us as well, as, as well, right? I think, you know, having a good team was really key as well. So, that, you know, I think we mentioned that previously, but, uh, you know, having the right people on board and being able to um, work together to achieve, um, you know, the end result and, you yeah, know, yeah. address problems as they came along and, yeah. you know, to be involved in the decisions because, you know, without input, you know, contractors will make decisions about the location of things and we were able to see it on site and go actually no can we do it there what would that involve and we were able to work through all of those for, for, the, for the better yeah and we we're also able to um schedule everything so we could see things in advance because we were the kind of uh, the contractors or the general contractors, general contractors yeah. doing yeah. this then um, then we managed to um yeah to time things very nicely so we didn't have any big gaps waiting for windows or waiting for this particular piece of product coming in because that worked out really well yeah one of the other things we did as part of this project was to um, apply for an energy grant. So there was grants at the time, so we were able to incorporate that because a lot of the work we were doing already, insulating the basement, you know, we went above and beyond again by insulating, you know, the, the joist cavities, which wouldn't have been necessarily a part, but, you know, we did that and, you know, we were rewarded with, um, with the grant in the end. Well, you guys shared a ton of golden nuggets. I think the audience is going to be very appreciative with the information that you provided. I hope you know, they're going to be motivated and inspired by your work. I'm certainly motivated and I'm impressed, even though we've seen hundreds of these, like I'm, you know, I'm never, you know, like I'm, I'm always amazed at the amount of work that, you know, you guys especially have put in 
you know, it's not just this project, but others as well. So thank you so much for sharing. You're very welcome. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a pleasure to work with you, Grania and Gordon. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Thank you. thank you. Okay, so Andy actually teaches the Legal Second Suites and Garden Suites class at Rockstar. He's helped countless Rockstar members over the years with their projects. So Andy, if anyone's interested in reaching out for advice, tips, whatever, can you please just share your contact info? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Anthony. So yeah, you can check us out at www.sweeteditions.com. We have a ton of free downloads that you can go uh, check out there. We have a YouTube channel. So, you know, this is just one of the projects that we're showcasing today. Uh, we've worked on a lot of projects and uh, we're definitely very uh, grateful to have uh, and be part of the, the Rockstar team as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great to kind of work on these projects together. Yeah. So big thank you to Gordon and Grani Aiken for sharing their project as well. And until next time, your life, your terms. Your life, your terms. I'll cut that part right <laughs> out. <laughs> your life, your terms. Your life, your terms. <laughs> All right, keep that in there. <laughs>